Hi guys and welcome back to Maths Class. Today we're going to look at differentiating using the product rule. And before we start learning how to do it, I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about why we need it and then talking about where it comes from. In the next video, I'll give you some examples about how to use it. So the product rule is something that we use when we have a function which has been created by multiplying together two other functions. So remembering that the word product means multiplication. So I've just given you two examples here. In the first one, f of x equals e to the power of x times sine x. At the moment, we can't, we don't have any method for differentiating this. We can't use the chain rule because it's not a composite function, right? One function is not inside the other, they're multiplied together. Same in this example, I've got f of x equals x squared times log base e of 3x. So because these are multiplied together, I can't use the chain rule, I'm going to need a new method. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you through a method of from first principles how we come up with the product rule and then at the end you'll have a new rule and in the next video we'll practice using it. So now I'm going to show you how we find a rule for finding the derivative of a function that is the product of two functions. So I've defined f of x as this product function, h of x times g of x. And now I'm gonna find the derivative using first principles where f dash of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, which I've seen before. And I'm just gonna start by substituting f of x plus h is going to be h of x plus h times g of x plus h and so on. So I've got the limit as h approaches zero of h of x plus h times g of x plus h, that's this part, minus f of x itself is just going to be h of x times g of x. Okay, that's still all over h. Now in my next line, I'm gonna do a little trick. So I'm gonna start, I'll just pause it so I write this out. So what you can see I've done there is I've kept this first line of working um, just the same as the line above it. But then what I've done is a little trick. I've added this expression h of x plus h times g of x minus h of x plus h times g of x. And I always call it a trick when it's the thing which we only do that because we know that it's going to make things work out. So how is this going to make things work out? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of rearranging and taking out some factors in a way that will make sense once everything comes out at the end. So, so I'm not finished and I've used a highlighter here to help show you what I've done. I've taken h of x plus h here and here as a common factor out the front and then what am I left with in my bracket? g of x plus h minus g of x, which is what I've got here. And I'm not losing my denominator, which is still h. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. And in my second line, I've done it with taking out a factor of g of x. So here, this g of x is the g of x that multiplies by h of x plus h there. And then my second g of x, this g of x here, is this one here, which multiplies by negative h of x, which is how I get this negative h of x here. So just to reiterate, what I've done is I've simply rearranged this line where these orange h of x plus h, that's a common factor for two terms. And then plus this red underlined g of x, which comes from this g of x and, oh, sorry, I should have circled the g of x here, right? They're the two g of x's that I've got that leave me with a common fact, with factors of h time, h of x plus h minus h of x over h, okay? Now it starts to become clear why we've done this little trick. Maybe it's not coming clear. It will be when I highlight something for you. If I just look at this bracket here, this g of x plus h minus g of x over h, it looks very much like this friend up here, which is of course the definition of a derivative from first principles, right? What I have here is 
the rise over the run of um, the secant on, on graph on the, the function g. And here I have the rise over the run of the secant on the function h. But of course, they're also embedded in this whole expression. But I can deal with that. So what I'm going to do now is h of x plus h. I'm going to take outside. So basically, I'm going to separate this and this and this and this into separate limits and according to my rule of limits I can do this so I end up with the limit of as h approaches 0 of h of x plus h times the limit as h approaches 0 of this expression here which is g of x plus h minus g of x all over h and still on one line but I'm running out of space here I'm going to now add the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x times the limit as h approaches 0 of h of x plus h minus h of x over h. Okay, sorry. Shift my... There we go. Okay, now the great thing about this is the limit as h approaches 0 that's going to be h of x, right? h of x plus h will approach h of x as h approaches 0. So here I've got h of x. The limit as h approaches 0 of this expression, this is the definition of g dash of x. Plus... The limit as h approaches 0 of g of x, that doesn't even have an h in it, so that's g of x, multiplied by this last expression here, the limit as h approaches 0 of h of x plus h minus h of x, h of x over h is the very definition of h dash of x. Okay, so what I've got here is the product rule. If my function is h of x times g of x, then the derivative is h of x times g dash of x plus g of x times h dash of x. And that's the product rule. And here's the same rule written in um, dy dx notation. If I have a function y which equals u times v, and so notice again, this is really different from a composite function, then dy dx is going to be the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. The product rule is not difficult to use. The key always is we've now got chain rule and product rule, and soon we'll have a third thing called the quotient rule. All right. So the key is always, firstly, in choosing which rule to use, and secondly, then, in defining your two functions. And we're going to look at that in our, in our next video, which will show you some worked examples.